Dewalt's newest battery claims to be 50% more powerful and 25% smaller. A great combination. Well, let's get the testing underway and see if the new battery is worth the extra price. In the first test, we'll see if the power stack delivers better impact driver performance. Then we'll see if the power stack can beat a 5 amp hour battery at driving in lag bolts. We'll compare the battery performance on an air blower. Finally, we'll take a look inside the battery and see how they're constructed. The new Dewalt power stack battery is on the right and the regular Dewalt battery is on the left. Since Dewalt is comparing their new power stack against a 2 amp hour battery, we're going to test them against each other and also we'll compare the power stack against a 5 amp hour battery. At a price of around $50, is this Dewalt 2 amp hour DCB203. If you're like me, you probably have used one of these before and it's a pretty decent battery. The DCB203 is supposed to produce 40 watt hours and we're going to test that. The DCB203 cells are made in Korea and pack assembled in Mexico. The fully charged 2 amp hour battery is right at 20.57 volts. The 2 amp hour DeWalt battery weighs 362 grams. Let's first compare the maximum torque using a tester that I put together. It's a pretty simple setup with two hydraulic rams wedged between two thick pieces of steel. As the bolt is tightened, we'll be keeping track of the pressure increase. The test will last right at 15 seconds. The battery is fully charged, so let's go ahead and kick off the test using a DeWalt DCF887 impact driver. Impact drivers use a lot less energy compared to some of the other tools we'll be using. So it makes sense to use a smaller battery like this one or the power stack in an impact driver. And the 2 amp hour battery made it to 1,725 PSI in 15 seconds. At a price of around $120 or more than twice as much as the 2 amp hour battery is this DeWalt power stack battery. It claims to be the next dimension in power. 50% more power, we're going to test that. Regarding 50% more power versus DCB203 battery, 25% smaller pack. It also claims to be the lightest. Cells are made in China and pack assembled in China. The power stack and the 2 amp hour battery were manufactured at nearly the same time in 2021. The power stack is only 312 grams, which is 14.5% lighter than the 2 amp hour battery. The fully charged power stack is at 20.67 volts or 0.1 volts higher than the 2 amp hour battery. Compared to the 2 amp hour battery, the power stack battery definitely feels like it's hitting a little bit harder and quite a bit faster. And the power stack made it to 1950 PSI or 225 PSI more than the 2 amp hour battery. Very impressive. So the power stack made about 11.5% more torque compared to the regular 2 amp hour battery. Finally, we'll see if the power stack can actually beat this 5 amp hour DeWalt battery. The 5 amp hour battery is more than twice as heavy at 629 grams. 20.53 volts for the 5 amp hour battery. Just like the power stack, the 5 amp hour battery seems to be hitting just as fast and hard as the power stack. And the 5 amp hour battery is definitely keeping up with the energy demands of the impact driver and made it all the way to 1950 PSI, the same as the power stack. So both the power stack and the 5 amp hour battery supplied more than enough juice to reach the maximum capacity of the impact driver at 1950 PSI. However, the 2 amp hour battery just couldn't keep up. Enough of the bench testing, let's see how the batteries perform driving in 5 5 inch lag bolts. I just finished recharging all the batteries. And the 2 amp hour battery just doesn't seem to be very motivated. And the DeWalt needed 8.6 seconds to drive in the first lag bolt. And the impact driver drove in the second lag bolt a little bit faster at 7.91 seconds. The third lag bolt was slightly faster at 7.65 seconds. The DeWalt really slowed down quite a bit on the fourth lag bolt at 8.77 seconds. 7.96 seconds on the final lag bolt for an average of 8.16 seconds. The power stack is fully charged. And the power stack is nearly a second faster than the 2 amp hour battery on the first lag bolt at 7.6 seconds. The impact driver is a little bit slower on the second lag bolt at 8.57 seconds. And the impact driver made the fastest drive yet at 6.43 seconds on the third lag bolt. And the power stack is holding up really well in the fourth lag bolt at 6.49 seconds. And the power stack finished the fifth lag bolt at 7 seconds flat for an average of 7.22 seconds or about a second faster than the 2 amp hour battery. And the 5 amp hour battery did the best yet on the first lag bolt at 6.08 seconds. It was even faster in the second lag bolt at 5.72 seconds. The third lag bolt took nearly the same time as the second lag bolt at 5.77 seconds. And the 5 amp hour battery isn't slowing down on the fourth lag bolt at 5.67 seconds. 
And the final lag bolt took 6.64 seconds for an average of 5.98 seconds. A couple of the brands appeared to hit a knot in the board, so I went ahead and threw out the slowest time for each brand. So the 5 amp hour battery averaged over a second faster than the power stack. However, the power stack is well over a second faster than the regular 2 amp hour battery. A hammer drill has higher energy demands compared to an impact driver. So let's do some testing with the DeWalt 999B, which claims to produce 42% more power with a flex volt battery. While we're not using a flex volt battery, let's go ahead and do some testing to see how the batteries compare. I just finished recharging all the batteries, so let's compare the no load RPM. 1,996 RPM for the two amp hour battery. The power stack is pretty much the same at 1,997 RPM. And the five amp hour battery is pretty much the same at 1,996 RPM. With the drill in first gear, let's test the maximum working load of the drill driving in a 12 inch lag bolt. I'll attach a torque adapter in line to keep track of the maximum torque. With the regular two amp hour battery, the drill began losing a lot of RPM almost immediately. And the drill tried to hang in there, but it finally gave up at 6.38 seconds. And the drill only made it to 311 inch pounds of torque. And the drill is losing a little bit of speed with the power stack, but it definitely seems to be holding up a lot better than the two amp hour battery. And the drill just wouldn't give up and almost drove the lag bolt all the way into the board. 10 and a half seconds or four seconds longer with the power stack and 366 inch pounds of torque. So the power stack delivered 50 inch pounds of torque more compared to the two amp hour battery. And the five amp hour battery is holding up just as well as the power stack. And the five amp hour battery held on for eight and a half seconds and finally reached a peak torque of 376 inch pounds or 10 inch pounds more than the power stack. So the five amp hour battery came out on top at 376 inch pounds, power stack 366 and DeWalt 2 amp hour battery, 311 inch pounds. So the power stack delivered 15% more torque compared to the regular 2 amp hour battery. A reciprocating saw uses even more juice than a hammer drill. So I'll be using Linux Fire and Rescue Blades to cut through 4x4s with four 16 penny nails. I'll attach 10 pounds of weight to the front of the saw. All the batteries are fully charged, beginning with the regular 2 amp hour battery. Unfortunately, the reciprocating saw just isn't getting enough juice from the 2 amp hour battery to keep the blade moving fast enough. And the reciprocating saw finally makes the first cut in 12.67 seconds. And the first cut really drained the battery and the saw slowed down quite a bit on the second cut. And the saw finally finished making the cut at 16.93 seconds or four seconds slower than the first pass. And the third pass seems to have lost quite a bit of blade speed as well. And the saw finally finished making the cut at 16.58 seconds for an average time of 15.4 seconds. The saw definitely sounds like it's cutting at a higher RPM with the power stack. And the saw made the first cut about two and a half seconds faster than the regular battery, very close to 10.14 seconds. Unlike the regular battery, the power stack is holding up very well in the second pass and seems to be cutting just as fast. 10.04 seconds is slightly faster than the first pass. And the saw is making very quick work on the third pass and isn't slowing down. And the third cut is slightly faster than the first two at 9.73 seconds for an average time of 10 seconds. Just like the power stack, the five amp hour battery is making very quick work of the four x four on the first cut. And it made the first pass in nearly the same time as the power stack at 10.29 seconds. And the five amp hour battery is holding up very well on the second pass and has more than enough juice to keep the blade moving quickly. 10.14 seconds to make the cut. And the third cut seems to be just as fast as the first two. And the saw finished making the cut at 9.73 seconds for an average time of 10.1 seconds. So the power stack barely edged out the five amp hour battery by a fraction of a second. Both batteries performed quite a bit better than the regular two amp hour battery that needed 15.4 seconds on average to make the cut. Compared to the other tools, the DeWalt air blower uses a lot more juice and smaller batteries will be completely drained in about five minutes or less. The airspeed meter is about 13 inches from the front of the air blower and it'll keep track of the airspeed during a five minute test for each battery. All the batteries are fully charged and so let's start off with the regular two amp hour battery. And the DeWalt started off strong at around 68 miles per hour for a few seconds, but the blower quickly lost some airspeed. At about one minute, the air topped out at 59.7 miles per hour. At two minutes, the airspeed is down to 58. At three minutes, the airspeed is down to 57.6 miles per hour. At four minutes, the airspeed is down to 56.6 miles per hour. And the air blower didn't quite make it to five minutes before the battery ran out of juice. And the power stack started out at 68 miles per hour and it held airspeed quite a bit better than the regular two amp hour battery. At the one minute mark, the power stack topped out at 67 miles per hour or about seven miles per hour faster than the regular two amp hour battery. At two minutes, the power stack is down to 60.2 miles per hour. At three minutes, the power stack is 
pretty much at the same speed as the regular battery. And the power stack ran out of juice about a minute faster than the regular battery. The 5 amp hour battery started off about the same as a 2 amp hour battery in the power stack. After about a minute, the 5 amp hour battery seems to be about the same as the power stack at just over 66 miles per hour. At 2 minutes, the 5 amp hour battery is holding up quite a bit better than the power stack at 65.7 miles per hour or about 5 miles per hour faster than the power stack. At 3 minutes, it's topping out at 63 miles per hour or about 5 miles per hour faster than the power stack. At 4 minutes, the airspeed is steadily dropping and it's down to 61 miles per hour. And the 5 amp hour battery easily survived a 5 minute test at 58 miles per hour. So looking at the minute by minute performance, the power stack performed just as good as the five amp hour battery at the one minute mark. At two minutes, the five amp hour battery really began to benefit from the extra capacity by about five miles per hour better air speed. However, the power stack outperformed the two amp hour battery. At three minutes, the power stack and the regular two amp hour battery were nearly drained. Since the power stack has the ability to give up energy faster, it just doesn't last as long. I use power tools in the cold all the time, so let's see how the batteries perform when they're really cold. I'll place the batteries in this freezer, which is set to very close to zero degrees Fahrenheit, and we'll come back and test them in about 12 hours. And the regular two amp hour battery averaged 8.01 seconds with the battery at ambient temperature. And the battery is at zero degrees Fahrenheit, and the cold temperature really slowed the impact driver down quite a bit, 11.2 seconds. The impact driver picked up a little bit of speed on the second lag bolt as the battery warmed up a little, 10.24 seconds or about a second faster. And the third lag bolt went in a little bit slower at 10.59 seconds. And the fourth lag bolt went in the fastest yet at 9.53 seconds. And the fifth lag bolt is by far the fastest yet at 8.67 seconds. So throwing out the slowest time, the two amp hour battery averaged 9.7 seconds compared to eight seconds at ambient temperature. And the power stack averaged 6.88 seconds at ambient temperature. And the power stack isn't at all bothered by the cold and only needed 6.74 seconds to drive in the first lag bolt. And the power stack is nearly as fast on the second lag bolt at 6.79 seconds or about four seconds faster than the regular battery. The third lag bolt went in even faster at 5.98 seconds. I think the fourth lag bolt ran into a knot in the woods since it took quite a bit longer at 7.65 seconds. The fifth lag bolt is slightly faster than the first one at 6.08 seconds, so 6.4 seconds on average for the cold battery, which is actually faster than the battery at ambient temperature. The five amp hour battery averaged 5.81 seconds at ambient temperature, and the cold temperature really slowed it down by quite a bit at 6.89 seconds. The second lag bolt went in a little bit faster than the first one at 6.43 seconds. And the third lag bolt took a little bit longer at 7.09 seconds. The fourth lag bolt must have ran into a knot in the board because it took 8.77 seconds, which is quite a bit longer than average. And the fifth lag bolt took 6.74 seconds for an average speed of 6.79 seconds. And a five amp hour battery averaged 5.81 seconds at ambient temperature. And when the battery was extremely cold, it averaged 6.79 seconds or about a second longer. The cold power stack actually performed a half a second faster than when the battery was at ambient temperature. The two amp hour battery really struggled when it was cold, needing almost two seconds longer per lag bolt. I thought out the batteries and they're fully charged. So let's go ahead and drain them using a five amp power draw beginning with the power stack. And the power stack started off at 19 19.63 volts are very close to 100 watts. After one minute, the battery is down to 19.28 volts. At 1.3 amp hours or 16 minutes, the battery began dropping off very quickly. And the battery is completely drained at 17 minutes and 36 seconds at 1.43 amp hours and 24.7 watt hours. The DeWalt 2 amp hour battery started off at 19.78 volts. It outlasted the power stack, making it to 22 minutes and 5 seconds for a total of 1.8 amp hours or 30.5 watt hours. The 5 amp hour battery started off at 19.96 volts. I went ahead and ended the test at 22 minutes. Looking at the discharge curve for the batteries, the 5 amp hour batteries significantly outperformed the smaller batteries throughout the test. However, the regular DeWalt batteries started off at a slightly higher voltage and quickly dropped below the voltage of the power stack by the one minute mark. And the power stack held higher voltage for the first 10 minutes of the test. The higher discharge rate caught up with the power stack by minute 11 and the power stack was finally out of juice at just over 17 minutes. Let's take apart the two amp hour battery and take a look inside. As you can see, there are six different 18650 batteries inside this battery pack. So this is an 18650 battery that I removed from a different battery pack a while back. 
So instead of using individual 18650 batteries, the power stack uses five lithium ion polymer pouches. Okay, it took me a while to pry this thing apart, but I finally got it apart. And as you can see, there are five different stacks of cells with this battery pack. And the battery pouches are actually pretty soft and flexible. I'm very impressed with the power stack battery technology. However, the price is extremely high at $119 to $120 compared to about $50 for the regular two amp hour battery. So if DeWalt will lower the price of that battery and more importantly, if they will actually increase the capacity of the battery, I think they have a bright future with that technology. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.